Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Be Green with Amy. I'm Amy. In 2012, I adopted a whole food plant-based lifestyle, and I have had fantastic health results as well as weight loss, and I've kept it off, and I'm so pleased. And I really love to interview people who have adopted this lifestyle or have really cool stuff to share with us. And I'm really glad that you guys are here. And please go ahead and type in, in the comments like where you're from, because I'd like to see where we're, what our audience is coming from and say hi to you also. Uh, and please, you can even comment, be strong, be well, and be green. That'd be good too, because by liking and commenting and sharing and subscribing, you put it out to the world and there's people out there that really need to hear this information. So you help them out by voting and typing stuff in the chat box. So. Uh, speaking of that, we're going to have a Q&A after our recipe demo today, and you can type in those questions at any time, and then toward the end of the broadcast, I'm going to go ahead and check the chat box and pull those questions up for our guest. And we are really pleased to announce our special guest today, and that is Evelise. She is... A, has a Bachelor of Science in Engineering and a Doctor of Pharmacy degree. She trained in culinary medicine and founded the Food Pharmacy, Pharmacia en la Cochina, where she provided guidance and support to those looking to adopt a whole food, plant-based lifestyle. Welcome, Evelise. Hi, thank you for inviting me. I'm so excited to be here. Oh, yes. And you look wonderful in your chef coat and, and you've got lots of beautiful colors in your kitchen. I am just so happy that you're here. Thank and you. to me, when I, I mean, you also have a lot of other accolades and accomplishments in your bio, and I don't want to waste our time uh, saying everything. So I'm going to put that in the comments because you have doing a lot of one, wonderful things, in, including non for profits and so forth. But it's such an incredible story because here you went to school to be a pharmacist, right? That's right. And now you're, and now you're doing chemical things in the kitchen. So what happened? Now, this is my pharmacy. So I traded in my uh, lab coat or my pharmacy coat for a chef coat. And I started to experience amazing things with my, my patients, with my clients. And it's something that has uh, changed my personal and professional life as well. So I have been whole food plant-based now for 19 years. And I, I started when I was a, a starting pharmacist. So I always say I'm like a recovering pharmacist at this point. Um, I still hold my license and I practice clinical pharmacy for a few years. But I really found my love uh, to be helping people to reach their health goals and to, to fight chronic diseases with food and lifestyle. And so that, that has been my journey. I, I, when I started out, I was looking for my tribe and I found uh, the Physician Committee for Responsible Medicine, as well as the T. Colin Campbell Foundation, uh, T. Colin Campbell Center for Nutrition Studies. And so I've been very blessed to find my tribe and to finally be working amongst those people that understand um, the, the work that we do and that promote uh, food as medicine. Oh, wow. I mean, just so many wonderful things that you have your uh, hands on doing things and, and helping the world. And I mean, that's what I'm about. You, you find out about this lifestyle and you're like, I need to get this word out. And what can I do to, to spread the word? Because there's just so many people out there that are suffering and, and they don't have the information. So, I mean, as a pharmacist, you probably ran across some people that had some health conditions that, uh, that you were trained to help them with as far as with pharmaceuticals. And then, and so what was, how did that change over from seeing that to doing uh, what you're doing? Yeah, nothing is as powerful as a healthy diet. It really is not. And so with medications, what we do, I mean, we're, we're happy that we have certain medications. If you have an accident, we're happy that we can treat you. And if you have, you know, a heart attack that we could, we could help you at, at surgery. 
Um, but you know, for the most part, chronic diseases, they're being just managed, not really treated because we're not reversing heart disease. We're not reversing diabetes with medication. We are just uh, managing, trying to control numbers, but the, the patients are not getting healthy. And that really changes when they embrace this lifestyle, the food. We, we really are what we eat and what we digest. And so when people start to adopt this lifestyle and they, they take away all of the animal products, they embrace a healthy, unprocessed, whole food plant-based diet, they start to see as you suffer yourself. You know, the weight starts to be shed off, um, the, the cholesterol goes down, um, the sugar, you know, the blood sugar levels go down. So it, it's, it's so impressive because you don't need to wait that long. The changes start to happen within days of you embracing this diet. So it really, really um, opens the eyes of many of the, to the power of food. Right. And for me, I, I was attracted to it, the lifestyle, because I saw that my parents and grandparents had things that I knew genetically, I was inevitably going to get some kind of heart disease or hypertension or type two diabetes. It was all running in my family. And, and when I found out about this lifestyle, I just was so excited to try it. And, and definitely now, by now I should be on those prescription medications as my parents and grandparents were. So I know that it works. And then to have the weight loss as a wonderful side effect. Wow. That's a big deal. And that's, that's something that I love about this lifestyle is, is the weight loss because I was packing on the pounds, you know, as the decades were going by and I just, and I was, you know, I was taking the skin off the chicken, putting my salad dressing on the side. I was doing everything that I thought was clean eating as far as what I, the information that I had. And, and then the only way that you could possibly think about losing weight would be like not to eat that much. And, it was, you know, I tried to, you know, make smaller portion sizes and it's just every year after year, I just kept gaining a little bit more, a little bit more weight. So there, there are some people on here that are looking for weight loss solutions that don't, you know, I, I heard uh, Dr. Furman said it, it's kind of like holding your breath and, and not breathing as many times per minute. If you're trying to limit the amount of food that you have, you just can't do that. And there's, and there's nothing wrong with you your your biology tells you to eat so many calories just to function so um talk about the weight loss benefits for some of the people that are tuning in for that yeah and you know the thing is that we have a quick fix mentality we want it to be we want to lose the weight and we sometimes we don't really care or understand the, the ways that we're using or the diets that we're using are actually making us sick and not really helping us um long term um, you know, we have that pill mentality. So a lot of these programs depend on failure because they know they're getting returning uh, customers and clients. With a whole food plant-based diet, you really get to the weight you're supposed to be. As long as you are eating um, whole foods and not processed and no oils and no sugar, refined sugars and all of that, then your, your, your metabolism starts to be what it should be and, and the weight as well. And so I, I tell my, my patients, you know, don't focus so much on the weight because that's going to naturally get to where it should be. Um, but focus on nutrition and the density of the nutrients that you're consuming. So the quality versus quantity, because there, when once you start to eat this way, your body will tell you it's enough. You know, you've had enough and we're eating tons of fiber. So that fiber is helping us stay satisfied. So as long as we're including those Four food groups that we know are super important, such as all the vegetables from different colors, including starchy and non-starchy vegetables. We want to eat all the, the different grains, whole grains, the legumes and the fruits, as well as a, a variety of uh, nuts and seeds, especially the high omega-3 fatty acid seeds, such as uh, chia, flaxseed and uh, walnuts. You know, we're getting in tons of nutrients. And so that's going to help us to see and crave the good foods. I always tell, I, I tell people, oh, I sometimes, you know, if I'm out of the house and I'm 
I'm traveling and, you know, maybe I'm not eating the same type of foods that I eat at home. I'm craving those huge salads that we make at home. So your body actually craves those foods. And so the, I think that's the key. Yeah, I agree. And, and somehow people think that they should take off 10 pounds a, a week. But when they were gaining the weight, they weren't putting on 10 pounds a week. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so why did they think it's supposed to come off that fast? <laughs> yes. And you know, it's it's not healthy weight loss either. And so it depends on how, how much weight you have to lose. So certainly if you're obese or um, uh, if you have a lot of weight to lose, you're going to lose more, especially in the beginning. A lot of that is water and um, but then really a healthy weight loss is about two to three pounds a week, um, you know, depending on how much weight and, and that, you know, should continue as long as we're also including healthy, uh, lifestyle practices because exercise, adequate sleep and controlling stress are also key. If we are, if we're eating, you know, a whole food plant based diet, but we're lacking in all those other areas, then that's also where our health is going to be compromised as well. Yeah, you're right. I'm hearing so much more about sleep nowadays where it almost seems like sleep is king and 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 eating style is queen because <laughs> it's just so so necessary and yeah. it's something that we and I heard somebody talk about sleep where they said it's it's one of the things that we're always apologizing for. Like somebody right. calls you when you're in the middle of sleeping, did I wake you up? Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> you didn't <laughs> like you're sorry that you were sleeping when you should say, Yeah, I was sleeping and I was doing good for myself, and you should too. Absolutely. You know, so it's yes. Yeah. Oh, and you know, I think in our um modern society and we we have so many distractions and we're always connected and the technology you know it, it takes away from the quality of our interactions the quality of our sleep so teaching our younger generations good habits i mean that's very important i have four kids and that's always been a challenge um i grew up staying up late and being a night owl so for us to try to reverse that it's been a process have to say oh oh yeah and with all that like you said with all the the, the different things to distract people with you know the internet and the cell phones and the games and things with the kids and the adults too there's just there's a lot to do yeah so 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 we talked about that this is great for weight loss and I just one of the things that I like about it I mean you can't go crazy but you really can eat enough food that you actually feel full and you don't feel like hungry in between meals and if you do feel like a little hungry then you know have a potato or something it's okay to have a snack as long as it's not calorie dense like like a nut right exactly yes and also recognizing is it hunger or is it boredom uh, is it just a matter of habit because i'm used to eating a snack you know after dinner at seven my ice cream is calling me so I think a lot of these things, we really need to be in tune. And when we start to get to gain new habits, I'm a big fan of um, intermittent fasting. So, you know, during the week, we try to uh, not eat at night, you know, after dark. And so, you know, give the digestive system a break. I think that's important. And I used to be one that I, um, I would eat, even if it was healthy food, I would eat really late at night. We, we would do stuff and... Uh, end up eating too late. So after you accustom yourself to changing those things, your body really, uh, it's very smart and it, it starts to get used to them. Just, just like your taste buds adjust to new foods, your digestive system also does. And you, when you eat, I get a lot of people saying, oh, I'm eating so much and I'm, and I'm losing weight. I can't believe it. You know, or others that I can't eat all that salad because it's so big. It's so much. So there are misconceptions. People think that, um, you know, a vegan diet or a whole food plant-based diet, it's going to be boring and they're not going to feel satisfied. But if you're bored and you're not satisfied, um, there's something wrong. We need to figure out what's going on because this is the best diet. It's so it's actually more inclusive because you're eating such, such a variety of different foods. I agree, and I I think that what you're touching upon is that if if you if you if you're not successful with this lifestyle, it's not because you can't be; it's because 
you don't have all the knowledge that you need. Exactly. And sometimes you need somebody like you, right? Because you do coaching and somebody to say, hey, you know, I'm doing this and, and, and I'm still hungry between meals or, you know, I haven't lost any weight and it's been a month. And like, what kind of questions would you ask or talk to somebody about if they had those kinds of questions? Yeah. So, you know, for the, the majority of those cases have to do with not eating an, enough calories or eating just um, non-starchy vegetables, for instance, they'll eat a salad, but they won't add potatoes or sweet potatoes or pumpkin um, or beans. They're missing. They're lacking on a certain food group. And, you know, we really need to include a variety. We know that our microbiome really depends on variety. So, and uh, now we're getting the, the science behind it and, and, and studies are showing us that we need to eat at least 30 different plants every week. And so if we're stuck eating the same stuff over and over again, then we're not feeding those bacteria, good bacteria for those other foods. So not that you have to go crazy and sit there and measure everything, but it's important to be aware, you know, am I, is my plate colorful? Am I including um, you know, the kinds of foods that I should be. So there are tons of tools out there. I love Dr. Greger's, um, uh, the, the app, the, dozen. Oh, yeah. the, the daily dozen, and you can mark, you know, the foods as you're eating, so for, especially for people that are starting out and they might forget, Oh, did I eat berries today? Or did I eat uh, my beans? And so those are tools that we should be aware of and use whenever possible, but also it becomes so intuitive and, and such an easy thing as time progresses. But when you're starting out, definitely support and all of these tools and resources are definitely key. I agree. I, I actually, uh, when I started out, I, I felt like I would need some support. And it was back in 2012. There wasn't as much information and support on the internet like there is now. And I started a, a, a local uh, pod well, it wasn't a pod in 2012, but I made it a pod when pod <laughs> started. It was a meetup group and it was just the people that could meet and be together. And so there is something called a pod network and people can go and, and we can put a link to that in the show notes, but there's a way that you can find a group in your area and they could be meeting virtually and maybe soon they'll be meeting again in person and you can get that kind of support. And, and also having people like at least that have the knowledge because I, and I agree with you at first. I mean, it's, it's a new way of eating and you're not really familiar with it. And so it can be a little bit uh, confusing and maybe, you know, you, you don't remember everything, but you know, now I, I, when I get my groceries, I'm, I just say, okay, I got to have this and this, and, and it's just seems so normal. And when I see other people's grocery carts and with, you know, soda or, or you know, or, you know, junk food or whatever it is, and it just, to me, because I've been doing it so long and I never thought it was going to be that way, that I can look at the, those shopping carts, you know, and they may as well, you know, have have foreign objects in the carts. And, and to me, because it just, I just can't imagine that I ever ate that way. <laughs> and because this is so satisfying and I feel like it turns back the clock, it gives you energy and and it it's not, it's not a cure-all for everything, but it, Definitely, there are so many kinds of lifestyle uh, health issues that it could really help with. And maybe we can start with talking about maybe diabetes, because that's a very big thing that's affecting not just older people now, the type 2 diabetes. Yes, the children as well. And, you know, it's, it's um, interesting that you mentioned uh, your experience at the grocery store. I remember when I first started doing this, I felt really lost. Uh, when I would go, I didn't have a plan. I would go to the grocery store and just buy whatever I thought looked nice or was on sale. Or, you know, I was just filling my cart with stuff, uh, lots of boxes and processed things. And even when I started a vegan diet, I really had no idea like what was good or not. So it was like trial and error. So having that support, I started reaching out and, and finding friends in my community back then I also had small children, so trying to find friends for them that they could relate to, I felt really, really isolated. And I think sometimes uh, people give up on, on changing their, their diet because of that reason. And so uh, take advantage of the pods, as Amy said, as other local meetups and groups and our online communities 
um, that are growing. Um, the, the T. Colleen Campbell Center for Nutrition Studies has a wonderful uh, group on Facebook where they post recipes and uh, links to resources. So you're always learning and, and um, just exchanging ideas with others, which helps you keep, keep yourself motivated. Um, diabetes is, is a, a chronic condition, you know, that it's, it's devastating. A lot of people end up, we have family members that have lost limbs that are on dialysis. Um, we have lost family members to, to diabetes. So it's, it's, it's definitely not something to overlook and it can be reversed with a whole food plant-based diet. Obviously, if you go back to eating the way that you were eating, then the diabetes comes back. So you have to follow that, that same road. But the problem with diabetes, a lot of people think diabetes is caused by too much sugar, but it actually is called by uh, too much fat in our diet, especially animal fat, oils. And so, you know, we are the cells in our, in, in our muscles and the cells um, you know, within our, our liver, our, our, um, that fat is, is taking the place um, of those, those spaces where the insulin will open the gate and, and uh, allow the insulin to go in and let the glucose, uh, allow the uh, insulin to open the gate and let the glucose in so that you, when you eat a, a high um, glucose meal or sugary uh, food, then your uh, blood sugar is not going to be high. So with time, uh, with our diet and lifestyle, then that's and if you have the right genetics, right? So we start with the genes. Genes are not the only uh, factor in diabetes, but you do have the predisposition. Um, and so after some time, and it depends on every, every case is different, but with a diet, if you start to remove those uh, high fat foods and animal products, then you clear those locks, as Dr. Bernard says, and you're able to get the key in and allow the glucose to enter the cell and be stored for energy later on. So um, it's important that we understand those differences and that we also know that, um, you know, it's, it's a high risk. Once you get diabetes, you're at high risk for other chronic diseases. So it's it's a you know part of the metabolic syndrome, so we have to take that into account. We're we're also being uh, bombarded with so many um, advertisements for medications and treatments that really should be reserved for the extreme cases where you know the diet. Which I have I have to tell you, after doing this for so long and seeing patients, you know, get off of all of these medications. Um, it's, it's very rare that the diet and the lifestyle doesn't work. So that should be first line of therapy. Yeah, I, I agree. And, you know, it's, it's, I think that there is a lot of misconception about the sugar and people are so afraid of starch. They're so afraid of the very foods that will keep them full and keep them, especially if they are at uh, risk for like if they have pre-diabetes or, or, or diabetes and they have that feeling that they're going to crash because they need something. These are the foods, especially beans, right? That really help stabilize the, the blood sugar. Right. Yes. And so uh, we have different types. There's different types of fiber in our food and each of them has a different uh, purpose. Um, and so it's important to eat a variety of foods so that we can get all of those different types of fiber. Right, right. Okay. And then, uh, and you know, we, we talked about diabetes. So another uh, big problem for people would be hypertension, you know, high blood pressure. So can you talk about that? Yeah. So heart disease is the number one killer. And um, that's also linked to diet and lifestyle. And we're eating all the wrong foods. Even people that feel that they eat pretty healthy and that they're fit, they're exercising. If you already have, again, just like diabetes, the genetic code for heart disease, then um, just by eating some animal products and oils, that can really turn those genes on and, and you start to, to get into problems. So, you know, I've had clients that as soon as they, you know, they were eating a lot of plants, but they were still eating cheese. They were still eating 
um, you know, fish or some oils. And as, as soon as they uh, took that out of their diet, their cholesterol number started to drop, their blood pressure started to drop and, and they felt, um, you know, much better. So there, there's, uh, there are, there's clinical and scientific evidence um, that a whole food plant-based diet can actually help you reverse heart disease as well. Dr. Esselstyn, Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn uh, wrote a great book on that topic, Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease, that I strongly uh, recommend to anybody that has a family member or yourself. It's, it's a wonderful Right. And that is a great book, and he had a lot of, uh, a lot of great information. Um, and so then we, we can talk about, uh, let's see, we talked about blood pressure and we talked about heart disease. So, I mean, and then you have that metabolic syndrome, right? Where it's, it's that, and, and especially now with, uh, viruses going around and, you know, a year from now, two years from now, there could be another virus going around. So it's not, it's not like, like, uh, in our lifetimes, we may, may see, something else. And so it's a really good time to be thinking about changing our lifestyle and uh, changing uh, our health. Yes, boosting our immunity. And, um, you know, obviously, that's not going to bring down your risk to zero, but it's going to strengthen your immune system so that your body's able to uh, fight a bacteria virus, bacterial inf infections, viral infections, and um, you know, keep your your T cells, keep your whole immunity strong. I mean, it's it's something that uh, our immune system is also what helps us prevent cancer. Um, so it, it's it's very important, not just now, but especially now, <laughs> as you mentioned. Yeah, and that's the thing. A lot of people think, oh, you know, diabetes, heart disease, and things. These are just going to be things that could happen to me, but they won't happen until I'm much older. So I don't really have to worry about it right now. But cancer, I mean, that's just something that it just kind of sneaks up on people, and out of nowhere, it happens. I mean, I don't, I don't think there's anybody that hasn't been touched by it by a friend or a relative, you know, to have that kind of diagnosis. And, and we are taught to think that there's really nothing at all. It's just like a roulette wheel. I mean, it's just, if we, it might happen to us and there's really nothing that we can do to, to prevent it. Yeah. And, and it's a very complex disease and every type of cancer has its own, um, different set of, of, um, caveats that you have to really take into consideration, but for the most part, we, we do know that animal protein, casein, for example, Dr. T. Colin Campbell studied um, this early on in, um, in his career with um, when he wrote the China study, and they found that uh, cancer is turned on by animal protein. So you can turn it on and turn it off. Um, so that's that's very profound and and um i have family members that have been diagnosed with cancer i have seen cases of people that have decided you know to really take this as um their first course of therapy and they have done amazing things uh they have been able to uh, avoid um very painful uh procedures and and medications not that it works all the time sometimes um, conventional therapies are needed. So it's important to understand that. Um, but even if you decide to go with a conventional treatment, um, changing your diet and lifestyle will only help you. It won't make it worse. It actually will help you be able to endure those therapies and to uh, prevent it from spreading or, or progressing. Um, so that's, it's, it's very important to think about that. And you know, with, with cancer, we think of it as sneaking up on us, but we actually, just like with diabetes and, and heart disease, we work at it for years before we actually get diagnosed. So these things are not happening overnight. And so even if we feel like we're young and we're healthy, um, you know, what's happening inside of us, we don't know. It, it's a very complex 
biochemical process in our body and a lot of reactions going on. So um, we really need to invest in our health and uh, every bite, every bite we eat, it's either uh, investment on our health or at the expense of our health. So we, we really need to think about that. I'm, I'm glad you said that. And wouldn't it be nice if every bite that we ate was delicious yes. and, and good for us at the same time? Is that real? Is it real? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we find out, Evelise? Why don't you show us how every bite we take can not only look beautiful, taste delicious, but be healthy for us and help us to help prevent diseases and reverse some of them too yes and i'm a foodie so food has to taste good and look good um so all of, it has to check all those boxes so i spent a lot of time um just working in my pharmacy which is my kitchen and figuring out you know different combinations of spices and herbs and i always tell people don't go for very complicated recipes especially if you're starting out Go with the basics. It could be, it doesn't even have to be a recipe. It could be a sweet potato with steamed vegetables and, you know, and, and some salsa or a plant-based cheese sauce that you make out of potatoes and, and, um, and carrots. So there's the, the possibilities are endless, but start with what's familiar. If you love chili and you're used to eating the chili with ground meat, then make a bean chili, add some lots of vegetables, and um, spice it up with lots of different spices and herbs. And so it can be very, very simple. I, when I made that mistake early on in my journey. I actually bought these books that have beautiful pictures, but the recipes were so complex and difficult and half of them didn't work out and didn't look like those pictures. So I learned very quickly <laughs> that that's important to stick to that. So today I'm going to show you guys how to make uh, one of my family's favorite recipes. These are butternut squash tostadas. We love to go around the world and eat different um, from different ethnic um, gastronomies and, and different spices and, and um, ideas. And Mexi Mexican food is one of our favorites. So today I'm going to show you how to make these really easily. And um, yeah, so we're going to start with some butternut squash. And I have here um, some butternut squash. I already took the peel off. You could actually um, you could actually cook the butternut squash with the peel on. I tried to avoid peeling my vegetables as much as possible. Um, but this one, I did take it off. I usually, I'll add it to a soup or a broth or something like that. And um, so we have here a few cups of butternut squash. I made half of what I typically would make because I, I already cooked the other part for, to show you. Um, so in order to bake this and avoid it drying out, what I like to do is squeeze some orange juice. So I'll add some orange juice, freshly squeezed, to this bowl. That's right. And so always thinking of how to substitute the oil and you really don't need to cook with oil. You should not be cooking with oil. And there's many ways to go get around that. So I'm gonna show you the first thing. So for this, instead of oil, we're using orange juice. You can add a little bit of, um, a little bit of vegetable broth as well. You don't really need that much because the orange was very juicy. And you can add some garlic and have some fresh crushed garlic in here. You could add some herbs if you like. The, um, the onions and the peppers are gonna be seasoned. So I'm not gonna add any more anything else to the butternut squash. I'm just gonna uh, bake it. And this butternut squash is so good. It doesn't need much. So now I'm gonna bake it um, until it's tender at 400 uh, degrees Fahrenheit or 425 depending on some ovens are um, a little bit stronger than others for about 20 minutes. And I have my butternut squash already cooked here as you can. And, and you didn't use any oil, right? To no cook oil. this. No butter. oil needed at all. And it tastes right. amazing. So what did you do to, to cook it, to make it? So I just without cooked, the oil? 
place it in a part in a baking sheet with parchment paper and you can use a silicone mat if you have that and that's it i just added the orange juice here to marinate it and i put it in the baking sheet and i let it i let it cook i didn't stir it or anything um and it was done so the next step is we're gonna this actually i was inspired on this recipe after eating um, there was a, a mexican little tex-mex restaurant that had uh, butternut squash burritos and tacos and we used to go there quite a bit and I thought oh, that's a great way to you know to incorporate the butternut squash and so we can make it healthier we can make it better so I have here a pan that I'm warming up and uh, again no oil nothing not, not even water to that we're gonna start with our onions. our onions usually go first because those are gonna to start to give out some juice, some of their natural essential oils are gonna come out of, out of into the pan and coat the pan. So the key to cooking um, or sauteing without oil is to, first of all, don't raise the, the temperature too high, so you wanna do medium, and also to stir often. And if you need to, you can always add a little bit of vegetable broth or water. So I think it's, yep, starts to sizzle. I have here some yellow onion and some red onion. We know that um, onions are part of the allium family, just like garlic. And there's a phytonutrient, a plant nutrient called allicin, that helps to uh, prevent cancer. So it's down in garlic and onions. And with the garlic, Dr. Bernard showed us, you want to crush it and leave it out to the air for about five minutes before you cook it to help um, activate that allicin and minimize the loss of the nutrients while cooking. So that's what we do. So we're going to saute that onion. Um, and then the next ingredient, which we're going to add in a minute, are some peppers. And, you know, growing up, I did not like peppers. There were a few things that I, I, I loved um, eating lots of fruits, and I love beans and rice. But I didn't really grow up in Puerto Rico eating a lot of vegetables and i ate a lot of processed food and so once i changed my my eating habits and i started to eat whole food plant based my taste buds started to change and i actually enjoyed foods that i didn't enjoy before so even if there's a certain food that you think ah i don't like that like i don't like beets or you know i don't like onions whatever it is just give it give it a chance to start to introduce it different ways and Sometimes there are foods that you will never like. Like I, for instance, don't like olives. I know it's a it, in, it's a thing, but everything else, pretty much I, I love. So I've, I've been able to introduce all those foods with time. Now I'm gonna add the, the peppers, and I have your red peppers. And you could add red, orange, you know, different color peppers. We have a farmer's market that we go to on the weekends and they've had some beautiful produce that we've been able to uh, obtain. So I'm very excited about that. And you could add here uh, some herbs. So you can add oregano, you can add, always think of herbs, you can add, it's not only for the taste, but also for nutrition value. Notice that I have not added the garlic yet. I try to add the garlic more towards mid-cooking or almost at the end because I love the taste of garlic and I don't want it to get bitter on me and I don't want it to burn either. And so I, I, I love that. I usually double or triple the amount of garlic. <laughs> my family, everybody in my family uh, loves garlic, so. Yeah, we love it. We love it too. And and every time we see a recipe, we usually say, "I don't think that's enough garlic." <laughs> I don't think that's enough, right? Like, I always start with my head of garlic, and people are like, "What?" <laughs> like, I don't have garlic here. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna add the garlic now. Again, and I also don't uh, usually cook my vegetables that much. I don't like my onions to be totally translucent and dead, <laughs> and so my peppers either. So I 
just cook my onions until they're they're not that the, the taste is not that strong and that's it for a few minutes i'm gonna add my garlic now see a lot of garlic in there and i love how you are showing everyone that here you have a st uh, stainless steel frying pan there yes. and it doesn't have any teflon coating oh. or, you know, and you didn't put any oil in there and look at how beautifully everything is mixing around there's not it's not burning it's not sticking no, and it's burning. colorful yes very much so i i got rid of all my non um non-stick cookware years ago and I love my um, my pans. These are stainless steel and titanium um, salad master pans. You don't need expensive cookware, but you do want to get rid of any aluminum, and you do want to get rid of. Um, I'm not a fan of nonstick. I'll, I'll tell you, even like you know those things. Some of it it starts to leach off into your food, and you I I just don't like it. All right, so next I'm going to add um, my beans. So I have here black beans that are have been already cooked. Um, and they're nicely cooked. And I drain them, okay, because I'm not using the, the, um, the bean water. Now, sometimes what I'll do is I'll reserve that liquid and I'll use it for a soup or, you know, part of my broth. So depending on what it is, you could use any beans in here. I'll add a little bit more broth. Yum. Look at all the beautiful colors. And I, yes. I bet it just smells delightful in your kitchen right it now. It does, it does. It's, you know, there's some the magic of the, the onions and the peppers cooking. It doesn't matter what you're cooking. You start out with that and everybody's drawn to the kitchen to figure out what's going on. <laughs> What are you <laughs> I have uh, my my daughters are excellent cooks and they they come up with uh, some really interesting recipes. All right, so that's pretty much done. Um, I'm gonna let that sit there and cook for a couple minutes. I'm gonna cover it so that it doesn't so it's, it just sits there for a minute or two. We're gonna make the dressing now. We're gonna make a Mexi crema dressing. And I'm a big fan of batch cooking. So a lot of times I will make double or triple the amount. Um, well, first of all, because if we had a large family, now two of our kids are, um, are out of the house, but we always have friends and family. And I love to have food in, in the refrigerator that we can just warm up for lunch the next day. So this Mexi crema uh, we will use today for our uh uh, tostadas, but it's also great as a dressing. It's also great for other recipes, so you can incorporate it in many different ways. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna add the tofu. I have silken. I have the organic um, silken tofu. Here, some cilantro. Ah, I love cilantro. So we have here a handful and a little bit more of cilantro, and I use the stems and all. Everything. See that? In. I'm glad you said that because so many people are so worried that they want to pick off all the leaves and it's oh, so tedious. No, no, Just no. throw it in. Throw it in. <laughs> throw in the whole thing. Uh, we're going to add uh, garlic powder and onion powder. We have half a teaspoon. Of each of those we have um apple cider vinegar we have one fourth of a cup of apple cider vinegar we have um nutritional yeast uh, so two tablespoons of nutritional yeast as well as guess what more garlic <laughs> that's right gotta have more because that more sauce garlic. has you want to have that flavor in the sauce too yeah yes and then we're going to add, I have here a lime. I like to use the, the zest of the lime as well because there's a lot of nutrition tied to that peel. And it has a really delicious uh, taste. It's like a sweet taste to it. So I'm going to zest that peel. I try to do that every time I'm using limes, lemons, oranges. 
I use the zest and it's not in my recipe. I'll add it to my water or my tea. You know, I got a tip. I got a tip for you. Uh -huh. uh, Dr. Furman has adult uh, adult kids now, and her, her, one of his adult daughters likes to cook, and he has uh, she's had access to his culinary chefs, and they taught her that anytime you use any kind of citrus, so you got the orange or the lemon or lime, to to use the zest. But what they use in the kitchen is a vegetable peeler. And they, that's how they get the, the peel, the zest. The yeah. Zest. And it, huh? yeah. Huh? I'll have to try that out. I'm yeah. And try to get in the bitter part. So the right. You have to be careful not to get the white yeah. part. It's, right. So I'm a little, but uh, that's a, that's an interesting uh, tip. I'm going to have to. Yeah. Talk. It might even be like pretty culinary wise yeah. in something. I don't know. Having ribbons from a, uh, from a citrus. All right, so now we're gonna add, um, now this is optional. I have here a fourth of a cup of avocado. Mine is starting to turn a little because of the uh, oxidation. Um, so that was in there. And now we're gonna blend, we're gonna process this. So now, last up is I have two, some cherry tomatoes. I'm gonna go ahead and dice these up. You can also use uh, some pico de gallo. So you can make pico de gallo and it's very basic. It's basically tomatoes, onions, cilantro, and um, lime, some garlic too. So if you'd like, you can do that. This is what I use my steak knives for to cut up my. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. And again, the color. We know that tomatoes are a great source of lycopene. And sometimes what I'll do is if I, have, if I get a lot of tomatoes, I'll go ahead and roast them. And, and that way I minimize the waste so that they don't, um, you know, because they start to, to get bad on you. All right. So well, that's great. Oil. So we have here uh, three corn tortillas that we have baked. Now they're nice and crispy. All the ingredients are is um, is just corn and lime. That's it. And usually the other tortillas will have a lot of unknown ingredients and oils or very processed. So that this is what we like. Now the base for the base of the um, tortillas, you can add a little bit of the salsa. You can add a little bit of guacamole if you like. You want something to help the veggies stick. I have here some plant-based queso that we made for another recipe. Oh. So that. But you can do whatever. You can even just do a little bit of salsa in here. And now we're gonna add our veggies. I'm gonna start to plate this. Look at how beautiful all those colors. Oh, yes, just beautiful. And now let's add our butternut squash. I forgot about the butternut squash. Oh my goodness, you get it to have that on too. Wow. And I obviously needed the bigger um, tray. Yes, because when we eat, we eat big quantities. We eat big quantities. <laughs> <laughs> we'll tomatoes in here. And it doesn't matter if they fall apart because it's all going to the same place. So That's right. <laughs> I have here a little bit of salsa. Optional. All these things are optional. And then right, you put, you put in... We have to add some green. So we'll put in um, some purple cabbage. This is a cruciferous vegetable. It's a must, it's part of that daily dozen, as well as more cilantro on the top. 
and sprouts. So we have here broccoli sprouts on the top. Any type of sprouts. We always eat sprouts with our meals. Yes, yes. And then the mexicrema. I should have put that in before the sprouts. You know, if you had something like this in a restaurant, I can imagine how many thousands of calories it would be if it was created traditionally. There we go. With the oil and and all the and the and the animal fats and so forth in there. So there you have it. Oh, how beautiful. Look at that. See guys, you can eat all this delicious food and and if that doesn't fill you up, I don't know what would. And you're not deprived and you're getting all these healthy ingredients. Oh, that's so beautiful. Yes, you can eat these. Usually we would serve these with some quinoa or make maybe a little bit of Mexican rice. Um, but these these are very filling uh, on their own. So that will be dinner. <laughs> Oh, how wonderful. Everybody's so lucky. I'm going to have to try that at my house because I just love cooking. And I love how most of the ingredients there, I mean, other if somebody never heard of nutritional yeast, that would be easy to find it. But everything else is familiar. It's not like some weird thing that you never heard of. It's just what nature made. Put the, the create a little tosta. Uh, put together so that's also very popular we make uh themed uh parties like that oh how beautiful is that so i th thank you so much for doing that that is so great Absolutely. and oh let's see rachel buckley says those look tasty i know right let's just go over and have some dinner there i'm really <laughs> glad that you're here to to see that um, I know that you're on a kind of tight schedule. Did you need to hop off now? Um, I could take maybe a question, but I yeah, I have another presentation. Yes. In a few minutes. Sure, sure. Okay, so let's see if we have a, a question. Jeanette, see. Oh, she says, when I eat beans, I get lots of gas. What can I do? Um, well, first of all, if you're not used to eating large quantities of beans, start with smaller quantities and let your... So your gut mi uh, microbiome gets used to eating beans. Um, and then also make sure that you are chewing properly. A lot of times we take in a lot of gas when we're, or air, I should say, when we're chewing. So we're talking and eating. So try to not <laughs> do that. And um, if you, I also add bay leaves when I cook my beans to help with the digestion of the beans. So that may help. Okay. Huh. Brenda Clement says, I'm going to make those right away. Yum. Yeah. I know. We're going to have the recipe in, in the, the comments section for you, as well as links to everything that Evelise does. So uh, don't worry about that. Oh, Carlos G., what do you do if the onions stick to the frying pan? You Why just, would that happen? Yeah, a little bit of vegetable broth or water. Some, a little bit of liquid. That's all you need. And just make sure you don't cook on high heat. So as long as you're doing medium heat, it, you shouldn't have any problems. Right. Yeah, I think that that's sometimes what people run across is that high heat, but then just add a little bit, like you said, a little bit of vegetable broth in there and it'll loosen right up. Oh, Alan W., will any tofu work or does it have to be silken? Yes. Um, silken is my favorite for sauces and, and creams and dressings, but I've had the situation where I've run out and I use the other tofu, the extra firm, and that's fine. You might have to add a little bit of water or process, you know, make sure you process it well so it's not grainy. Um, but if you have a high power blender, such as a, a Vitamix, you shouldn't have any issues. Right. Because sometimes you go to the store and they're out of this kind of tofu yes. or that kind of tofu yes. and you say, oh no. And you're so worried that you have to uh, go. These recipes are so forgiving that if you have to substitute one thing for another, most of the time it works out just it fine. Works. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, one more question and then we're going to let you go, I guess. Uh, Emily W., what is a good kitchen knife to purchase? Uh, you know, I I don't have any specific brand. I just make sure that you keep yours uh, sharpened because if not, they can be really dangerous. But I have a few different sizes. No specific brand, to be honest with you. 
Okay, just keep them keep them sharp. Keep That's them sharp. I agree. Right. <laughs> Take good care of your knives yeah, too. Keep them too. clean and dry, and they should always last you for a long time. Yes. So, um, is there anything else that you wanted to add uh, t t about you or what you do that we didn't talk about? We're going to have it all in the show notes. But if you wanted to talk about no, I think that, we covered everything. I invite you to explore the links and the resources and. I'm here for you if you guys need any help and support. I'm happy to connect. Okay. And um, I really wanted to thank you for being here, Evelise. We're um, going to talk about our, uh, our next guest, which is coming up. And that's going to be Margaret Germain. She lost over 100 pounds and kept it off. And she went from a cane to a hiking stick. And that's going to be Wednesday the 31st of March, right here, 6 p.m. Eastern. I hope that you can join us. I and I her. wanted to thank, thank, yeah, isn't that great? All on this, on this lifestyle. So she's going to tell us all about that. And I wanted to thank Jessica from uh, Just Tass a Voice. She helped a lot. And I also want to thank the audience. Thank you for being here. And and because if you're not here, Evelise wouldn't come. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd just have to go to her kitchen. So, uh until we see you guys again, be strong, be well, and be green. green. <laughs> Bye. Thanks so much for coming. Thank you.